Professor Davis and Chem Survival Enterprises are independent entities not associated with Perkin Elmer or Cambridge Soft. ChemBio Office and the applications that you're about to see are copyright Perkin Elmer and Cambridge Soft and are used with the expressed permission of the copyright holders. For more information about how to order these products, go to www.cambridgesoft.com. Hi everyone, Professor Davis here from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival and today I'm going to show you how to draw a fairly simple organic molecule using Perkin Elmer Informatics Chem 3D and create an image that you can put into a PowerPoint slide or a Word document or even print out and put on a t-shirt and have it make it look really really nice. Now I've already opened Chem 3D from the ChemBio Office Suite and sometimes when you open it you'll have a ChemDraw editor already open and other times you may not so I've deliberately closed mine here so I can show you how to get it back if you don't see it. It's a lot easier to draw on the Chem Draw panel instead of the Chem 3D panel which I'm looking at right now. In the Chem 3D panel when I start adding bonds and atoms things can get a little a little out of hand and a little difficult sometimes. So what I'm going to do is delete this this little train wreck that I just created and instead go to the view menu so that I can open the Chem Draw panel. And in the Chem Draw panel you'll see a template that has a few really easy to use tools that will make the drawing process much much faster and simpler. So today we're going to draw benzoic acid. Now I could start using my Chem Draw panel by grabbing the solid bond tool and using my left mouse button to click and drag the bonds into the orientation that I want them. So let's say I want one here. Now if I click directly on the end of this, it will automatically place in a realistic looking angle. If it goes the wrong way, I can simply click again and that will take me back around and then I can come down here and just delete the unwanted bond. So I can go through this process of drawing the entire benzene ring, clicking on the center of the bonds to create my double bonds, and in doing so I can create a benzene ring, which I'll rotate using the trackball so we can see it better. Now that took a little bit of time and in this case I didn't have to use that time and I'll show you why. I'm going to take the lasso tool and actually undo the work that I just did by using the backspace. The chem draw window has templates of some very common backbone structures for molecules including benzene. So by selecting benzene instead of the solid bond tool I need only to click once in my chem draw panel and up comes the entire molecule. But I'm not done yet. I want to add a functional group to benzene. So now I'm going to go back to my solid bond tool and click on one of the corners of benzene and let ChemDraw decide the angle. Okay, it's decided a very reasonable looking angle there. That's an sp2 carbon. It should be 120 degrees. Perfect. Now, just as before, I have the option of clicking with the mouse to create the bond structure, then coming up here to the text tool and using that to insert the atoms to create a carboxylic acid functional group. But just as before, I didn't have to do that because ChemDraw can do some of that work for me. So let's get rid of that. I'll put my bond back on here, but this time I'm going to use the text tool to enter COOH. Now ChemDraw is smart enough to know that COOH means I want a carboxylic acid there with all the associated bonds. So it draws it into the molecule nicely. But there is one problem with the molecule the way that it's been drawn over here in the Chem 3D window. And that is that I don't like the direction this hydrogen is pointing. I'd like to draw a sterically, uh, energetically minimized structure, and I know that it just looks nicer if this hydrogen is actually pointed up above this oxygen as it's oriented instead of out back towards the ring. So how do I do that? How do I change the position of that one atom in Chem 3D? Well, the answer is I have to rotate a bond dihedral angle. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to use the select tool here, the leftmost arrow, and I'm going to grab four atoms. And I'm choosing these four atoms because the central bond among those four atoms is this one right here, the bond that I want to rotate. And what I mean by dihedral is, if I rotate the molecule here so we sight along that bond, it means the angle between the outer atoms, this one and this one. So right now the dihedral is 180 degrees and I'd like it to be zero degrees so that my molecule looks a little more slick and a little more just right. So how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to go back to the trackball again 
with that bond and its four atoms still selected. But this time, instead of clicking on the trackball, I'm going to use the drop down menu right next to it, which brings up this little dial tool that I can use to adjust positions and angles. Now, if I don't select anything, the dial will simply cause the molecule to rotate. I'm holding that with my left mouse button as I do this. But what I want to do is rotate the bond, so I have to use one of these two tools down here on the bottom right hand corner. Each one of these tools will lock down a different side of the bond and allow me to rotate the other. And it's sort of a coin toss as to which one is which. So let's just grab the one on the left here and see what happens when I use my slider. Okay, the big molecule moved, and I'd rather move the smaller side. So I'm going to grab the other one, pinning the opposite side of the bond down, and now I can rotate it until the dihedral angle is about zero degrees, just where I want it. So I've rotated that bond to place the hydrogen in a location where I want it. And I'm going to use the select tool and just click out in the field here to deselect those atoms now. So I've created my benzoic acid molecule. It looks really nice, just the way I want it. But let's say I want to add a little 3D flair to this, because after all, it's going in a presentation. I really want it to, to jump out and pop. So I'm going to use my trackball to orient it a little bit differently so that all the atoms aren't coplanar. I can do this just by grabbing in the field with my left mouse button and spinning arbitrarily. Or if I only want to change one axis, I can move out to the edges where I can grab those edges and either rotate the z-axis, rotate the x-axis, or rotate the y-axis in isolation of the others. So let's say that this is the orientation that I want to make the point that I'm going to be making. I'll make it just so. That's the way I like it. Now, my final choice that I have to make here is, do I want this in perspective or orthographic representations? The orthographic representation is what you're seeing now, in which all of the atoms, regardless of whether they're closer or farther away in the field, are the same size. This simulates what it would be like to look at the molecule at a great distance through a telephoto lens. But let's say instead, I want it to appear as though I'm standing right beside the molecule. I want to exaggerate the depth. I'm going to come to the top here, and I'm going to use this icon right here to switch it into a perspective mode. And let's watch what happens. Now you can see, when I'm in perspective mode, the atoms that are closer in the field appear larger than the atoms that are farther back in the field. And it adds a certain kind of 3D flair to these structures and these images that goes really nicely in, in presentations where you're trying to really catch people's eye. So I'm going to leave it ultimately in the, uh, in the uh, perspective mode, but let's look at it one more time here. There's orthographic, all the same, perspective, sized according to depth. Right? Again, orthographic, perspective. So let's say we want perspective. Great. If I wanted to, I could simply do a screen capture of this image and be done with it. But if I do that, I'm going to get a lower resolution image, and I'm going to have the background included in that image. If instead, I'd like a nice high resolution image of that molecule with a transparent background, which will allow me to put it into documents on top of other backgrounds or other objects without obscuring them, I have to do one more step. And that is, I have to save the file. But I have to save it not as an ordinary chem 3D file, which is the .c3xml format, which I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway. Just in case I want to edit it again, I need to save it this way. But if I want to place it into a paper and make it look really beautiful, instead I'm going to come up here and go File, Save As, and I'm going to choose PNG. This portable network graphics file format allows me to select a transparent background using this checkbox. And I've set it to a nice high DPI, about 300 dots per inch. That gives me a resolution that's suitable for printing, so I can not only put this into a PowerPoint for a screen presentation, but I could also uh, print it out for a paper. I could put it on a mug or a t-shirt, and it's going to look really nice. So let's save our benzoic acid.png file on my desktop. Chem3D is warning me, hey, you can't reopen PNG files in, in this program for editing, and that's okay because I've already saved my uh, Chem3D formatted file. Now I'm ready to let go of this program and go back to my desktop. So at my desktop, I find the benzoic acid file and simply open it. 
Now you can see I've got a much cleaner, crisper image, and the background of that image is transparent, which makes it much easier to use if I'm creating layered multimedia presentations. That's all for now, everyone. I'm Professor Davis from ChemSurvival.com and the YouTube channel ChemSurvival. I'll be back soon to show you even more neat tricks on how to use Chem3D to create really amazing images that you can include in your presentations as well. I'll see you on the next video.